Hello, my name is Celito Rodriguez and this is my presentation uh, Marketing and Brand Management uh, for MK517 at California Intercontinental University. This uh, presentation is about uh, strategic brand management. I am going to discuss uh, brands and brand management, uh, customer based brand equity, brand positioning, choosing brand elements to build brand equity, designing marketing programs to build brand equity, integrating marketing communications to build brand equity, leveraging secondary brand associations to build brand equity, developing a brand equity measurement and measure management system, measuring sources of brand equity, as in capturing customer mindset, uh, measuring outcomes of brand equity, capturing marketing performance, designing and implementing brand strategies, introducing and naming uh, new products and brand extensions, managing brands over time, uh, managing brands over geographic boundaries and market segments, and uh, closing observations. Uh, obviously, this is uh, a very brief introduction about each of these topics um, that I'm going to be uh, discussing in this presentation. Topic one of this presentation is about brands and brand management. Um, and, and basically, um, what is a brand, right? Um, we could define a brand as a uh, a term, a sign, a symbol, or a design or, or combination of these elements uh, that is basically intended to identify the goods and services of one seller or, or a group of sellers uh, from the services and products of the competition. Uh, brands definitely are very important and they do matter because th they are what actually differentiates one company from another a and they basically are the the stamp of uh, of a company um, almost everything can be branded uh, physical objects you know services um, uh, a person a celebrity a place uh, even uh, a country a city so almost yes uh, almost everything can be branded uh, the the strongest companies are or the st the strongest brands are those that can position themselves in the uh, mindset of the consumers because of the perception that the consumers have about uh, about these brands. Uh, some of the uh, st strongest brands in the world, like Apple, 3M, Microsoft, GE, Sony, Dell, uh, Google, IBM, uh, the perceptions that you know we consumers have about these brands over the competition, it's it's. It's, it's greater than the competition. That's why uh, they're so important. Uh, obviously, like anything else, um, there are a lot of you know branding challenges and opportunities uh, that companies you know um, have to face. Uh, competitions you know can be very rough, especially nowadays in the age of the internet. But at the same time, uh, the these challenges you know come around uh, the same media and the internet also brings a lot of opportunities that company can uh, take advantage of and, and obviously uh, the brand management process it's it's a you know it's, it's a number of things that uh, uh, the marketing department you know have to do in order to um, make um, equity out out of this brand so that's basically in a nutshell um, obviously this is a huge topic and we could spend a lot of time talking about this but uh, th these are the uh, most important elements number two customer based brand equity um, so here we are gonna be I'm gonna be talking about customer based uh, base brand equity uh, making a brand is strong uh, that gives brand knowledge um, sources of brand equity uh, the four steps of brand building and creating customer value a and I'm just basically uh, decided to take this example um, 
Apple is a very a strong brand and it has a lot of customer base uh, um, equity. Uh, the perception that consumers have about Apple is that it is one of the best brands out there. And if you look at the elements of a strong brand, um, Apple is user friendly. It's uh, educational, so when it comes to our mind, we think of apples as you know a fun um, desktop publishing. It's it's one of the most uh, uh, powerful and um, user friendly and, and most common application used nowadays. Again, we talk about friendly. We think about the iPad. We think about the iPhone. Um, we think about the um, you know graphics um the uh, apple brand also uh gives the perception that they are very creative it it's cool to own apple um so the apple logo it, it's very simple but at the same time it's 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 so cool uh you don't have to be uh, design a high-tech logo to be a high-tech company so that's what we have learned over the years with this they are a uh, very um, innovative company um, and also Macintosh comes to our mind so all of these are elements that uh, are related to uh, customer based brand equity and we could spend a lot of time talking obviously about this topic but uh, uh, the, the, the gist of of the idea is that uh, this elements must be present you know for any brand to kind of um, you know have some customer based brand equity uh, number three brand positioning uh, in brand positioning uh, the topics are identifying and establishing brand positioning um, how do you identify the brand, the position of the brand? How do you establish brand position? Uh, obviously, there are a number of guidelines the company must follow to be able to accomplish that. Um, companies must be able to define and establish brand mantras. Um, there has to be internal branding. So the, the, the internal customers, the employees of the company are very important how they think about the brand and obviously um, companies do so brand audits to figure out you know the position of their brand. Uh, when, when we look at for example MTB and their position uh, a lot of things come to mind. Uh, MTB it kind of revolutionized uh, um, the way we watch TV and they are perceived as being uh, changing, uh, original, uh, real and genuine, uh, you know, for me, especially for the young generation, uh, they are fun and entertaining, uh, young, hip and cool, uh, irreverent and, and, and rebellious, uh, popular, interactive. So when you look at all these things and um, and obviously there's a number of other elements that comes to mind when you look at MTV. The position of MTV when it comes uh, to music, when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to um, interactive, connected, young people, popular, again, it, it's one of the most, um, one of the strongest brands when it comes to, uh, to those elements. And, and, and basically, uh, that's the main idea of this topic, you know, uh, stuff that companies do to precision the brand. Topic four, it's um, choosing brand elements to build brand equity and, and obviously to position the brand as we just talked on, on the previous slide. Um, well, so what are the criteria for choosing brand elements? Um, what are the options and tactics for brand elements? And how do you put it all together? And if you look at this picture over here, th there are um, six basic concepts um, or, or groups that you could use to kind of accomplish this. Um, it has to be memorable. Uh, the brand has to be meaningful. It has to be likable. Uh, it has to be transferable uh, across multiple products. Um, it, it has to be adaptable and also you have to be able to protect it so it has to be protectable and when we think about uh, big 
brands, the strong brands, like I, I just talked about Apple in um, uh, one of my previous examples. Just think about this, you know, Apple, it's memorable. Yes, it is. Is it meaningful? Absolutely. Is it likable? Oh, yes. Um, can you transfer Apple to different categories in a product? And of course, you know, you, you got the iPhone, you got the iPad, you got the iMac, uh, and, and there's a number, you got Apple TV, uh, there's a number of products that are um, uh, under this umbrella. Uh, they are adaptable and obviously uh, they are uh, protectable because Apple has made uh, all of this possible. Number five. Uh, company have to design marketing programs to build uh, to build um, equity. Uh, so obviously, you know, marketing is uh, the key point over here. Um, when we talk about marketing, uh, there is a new perspective on marketing, very different than it was, let's say, 20 years ago. Um, there must be some product strategy. There has to be pricing strategy. And obviously, channel distributions is very important. And we could summarize all this into uh, consumers and companies. Um, when it comes to consumers, uh, nowadays, consumers are very educated. They have a lot of power. There is so much information over there that consumers can look at in, uh, in companies like Amazon.com, where you can basically buy anything you want. Uh, there is a, like customized product buying there is a lot of interaction um, so but at the same time the consumers have a lot of uh, power and they can differentiate from companies to company the companies at the same time can use the same technology and they also have a lot of power to um, they can cover you know the whole world you can go to you know you can buy stuff from China from Japan from the UK um, so and companies also have then that uh, uh, facility you know they can have two-way communication with their consumers they can uh, customize their products they can send ads coupons in promotion and promotion you know to to millions of users at the same time so you know so all this technology is is advantageous for both you know consumers and company and um, uh, designing a good marketing program to build equity it's uh, a very important uh, uh, topic in uh, in the whole um, mantra of uh, uh, you know brand equity and, and strategies point num point number six integrating marketing communications to build brand equity um, the new media environment uh, the median ha the media has changed tremendously over the years and uh, um, that's something that has to be taken into consideration uh, overview of marketing communication options obviously there are many more options than what there used to be 20 years ago uh, developing integrated marketing communication programs these are very important uh, uh, elements when it comes to integrating marketing communications uh, to build brand equity to be successful in this um, area a uh, company must be analytical uh, they must be curious uh, they must be single-minded you know when they focus uh, their message uh, they must be integrative and um, reinforce the, the message through consistency um, they must be creative uh, now more than ever marketing has to be very creative um, there have to be uh, very uh, observant uh, and keep track of competition competition it's uh, greater than ever uh, also because of you know the new media environment and all this technology um, they must be patient um, sometimes it, it takes a long time for communication to uh, to take effect uh, in any uh, new marketing program and obviously they have to be uh, realistic and, and basically understand the complexities involved in, in marketing communication so uh, this uh, eight concepts this you know eight uh, um, uh, 
uh, points are extremely important if uh, integrating marketing communications to build brand equity uh, it's going to be successful. 7. Leveraging secondary brand associations to build brand equity. Um, the, uh, here we'll talk about uh, conceptualizing the leveraging process, uh, the company, the country of origin and other geographic areas, channels of distribution, co-branding, licensing, uh, celebrity endorsement, uh, sporting culture or other events, and third-party sources. So all of these are um, important factors to have to uh, take into consideration when we want to leverage secondary brand associations. As you can see in this picture over here, um, we just basically uh, mentioned some of these things over here, but uh, um, any brand that wants you know to really build equity and to expand uh, need to build these associations association with uh, um, like you know places country of origin channels uh, uh, causes a lot of company use causes to do marketing uh, for example a company may associate with the uh, cancer society and sponsor stuff you know uh, to build equity and, uh, based on that cost um, uh, events um, we'll, we'll see for example the um, Olympic Games and such you know a lot of company uh, associate associate with an event like that because there are millions and millions of people uh, watching and definitely anyone that can um, build some marketing program around an event like the uh, Olympic Games and such you know will basically uh, build some uh, brand equity um, and uh, we see for example uh, people in a lot of these um, famous athletes, uh, you know, are looked after to endorse, you know, specific products, and definitely uh, uh, that's something that creates a lot of uh, brand equity um, through leveraging secondary associations. All right. So in number eight, uh, developing a brand equity measurement and management system. Okay. So company uh, spend thousands and millions of dollars in uh, marketing programs uh, positioning themselves and building brand equity now is it paying off how do you know how do you keep track of all the of, of all these things um, so uh, here the topics are uh, the new accountability uh, new accountability uh, the brand value change designing brand tracking studies uh, establishing a brand equity management system so if we are building equity and we are spending all this money how do we find this out right um, so um, when you look at uh, marketing program investment in, in product communications trade employee etc you need to find out what is the customer mindset what is the uh, market performance is it all the money and all the time and all the effort that we are spending to build brand equity is it paying off what do customers think about ourselves um, how about shareholder you know the, the the people that are actually investing money in the company what is the the dividends what is the stock price uh, is it worth it should I invest in this company so all of these are uh, important ingredients that have to be uh, taken into consideration when uh, developing a brand equity uh, management and um, measurement and management system um, also the the multiplier the the, the program quality um, you know, is it is it relevant? It's it, does it have clarity? Uh, is it you know distinct than than other ones? And uh, uh, what is the uh, marketplace conditions? You know, what's the uh, competition uh, reactions? A and obviously, uh, we just talk about the investor uh, sentiment and how they feel about the company. So when it comes to developing a brand equity measurement and management system, uh, all of these are. Um, elements and ingredients that must be uh, studied, analyzed, and, and captured. Number nine, measuring sources of brand equity, capturing customer mindset. So um, 
to find out how the brand is doing obviously it's the customer is what matters you know uh, there are a number of qualitative research techniques the company used to uh, accomplish this um, there are also uh, quantitative research techniques and there are some comprehensive models of customer based brand equity that companies must em employ in order to uh, measure sources of brand equity uh, when it comes to the customer mindset. As an example of measuring the uh, sources of brand equity uh, when it comes to capturing the customer mindset, um, if we look at the picture over here and look at the State Farm Insurance, uh, th there is a number of uh, things that come to us from the customer um, uh, through some of this uh, research. Um, and, and according to some studies that have been done, it's um, it's one of the top of the line insurance. Uh, it has been around for a very long time. It is safe. It is responsive. It is convenient. Uh, it has reputa good reputation. Um, it has fast settlements, which is very important for uh, an insurance company. Um, it has, you know, high personal service, good neighbors. Uh, you know, it's dependable, it's reliable. So, a a brand like this um, says a lot. Uh, it basically means that customers uh, like it, customer trust in it, uh, it has a good reputation a and these are the kind of things that uh, are uh, captured um, in the customer mindset when these uh, researches are done. So in the previous slide we talked about um, measuring the capturing the the mindset of the consumer okay so how does that translate into uh, uh, the market performance so in topic number 10 measuring outcomes of brand equity capturing the market performance um, we need to find out okay um, the financial aspect of this uh, research what does it say uh, th is there any brand profit uh, what's the the uh, forecast of the brand? What's the cost of capital for this? Okay, and and basically this is done through you know survey data. Uh, a lot of surveys are done to basically uh, get all this information. Um, and uh, again, this th there are several methods used. There are comparative methods and holistic methods. Uh, comparative methods. Um, use uh, brand-based uh, comparative approaches, uh, marketing-based comparative approaches and conjoint analysis and the holistic methods use the uh, residual approaches and valuation approaches um, uh, to evaluate the financial aspect uh, of this uh, information. Number 11, designing and implementing branding strategies. When, when designing, designing branding strategies um, and building company image, um, some of the elements that are important over here is the corporate contributions conduct. Um, does the corporate contribute to society through charities and uh, schools, universities and stuff like that? Uh, how about employees conduct? Uh, how do the employees of that company, you know, uh, feel about it? About respect, salary, advancement. How about the product, the features, the performance, the quality, um, communications? Um, when it comes to advertising, publicity, promotions, uh, the price, uh, support, uh, service, um, distribution channel, sales force, company uh, business conduct, and the corporate social conduct. So all of these are uh, categories of um, elements and um, I ingredients, if you want to call it, concepts that a company must build uh, upon if they want to implement good branding strategies. Topic 12, introducing and naming new products and brand extensions. Um, and the kind of things we'll uh, see over here is new products and brand extensions. 
obviously if you want to build brand equity uh, new products and brand extensions are extremely important what are the advantages of these extensions uh, obviously there are also disadvantages of brand extension uh, understanding how consumers evaluate brand extensions evaluating brand extensions opportunity and extension guidelines based on academic research um, and um, and the picture here shows a number of things that uh, must be taken into consideration when it comes to naming and, and product and, and brand extensions. Um, so uh, on the facilitate new product acceptance side, um, basically uh, a company can improve the brand image by doing this. They can reduce risk perceived by, uh, by customers. Uh, they can increase the probability of gaining distribution in trial and so on, increase efficiency of promotional expenditures, reduce costs of introductory and follow-up marketing programs. Uh, when it comes to uh, providing feedback benefits to the parent brand and company, uh, they clarify brand meaning. Or in other words, they could do that uh, if given the right approach they can also enhance the, the parent brand image, uh, bring new customers into brand uh, franchise and increase market coverage. And, and all of these are the advantages and, and, and the positive things, but in the same time, if the wrong product or the running um, you know, brand extension is introduced, uh, things may not go as well as the company thinks, so that, that could be a disadvantage. Um, you know, too many products uh, without any extension may confuse the consumer. Uh, they may not know exactly, you know, which uh, model is which and, and what distinguishes one from the others and stuff like that. So, uh, therefore, there are a number of guidelines based on research, academic research, that uh, a company must follow if they want to be successful at introducing and naming new products and brand extensions. 13. Managing brands over time. When a brand has been around for a very long time, uh, there may be a need to reinforce the brand. A uh, company may have to do programs, marketing programs to revitalize the brand and uh, therefore adjustments to the brand portfolio uh, may be um, uh, made. Um, so it, it, if you look at the picture, um, we have to deal with stuff like, you know, consumer response to past market and activity. So what is the brand knowledge? Uh, what is the consumer response to current market and activity? So what has changed over time? Uh, company, companies have to be dynamic. Uh, time changes, technology changes, and therefore uh, companies have to be able to adjust uh, within time also if they want to be successful. 14. Managing brands over geographic boundaries and market segments. Uh, regional market segments. All the uh, demographic and cultural segments. Uh, what are the rationale for going international? Uh, advantages of global marketing programs. Obviously, there are disadvantages of global marketing programs. Uh, standardization versus customization. Global brand strategy. Building global customer-based brand equity. Uh, all of these are uh, factors that must be taken into consideration if a company is um, uh, trying to manage brands over geographic boundaries and market segments. According to then the, the you know the seven rules of international uh, distribution, and just to um, expand a little bit more on the previous slide when uh, talking about managing brands over geographic boundaries and market segments, um, number one, select distributors. Don't let them select you. Um, you know, company have to be. Um, very careful the, the 
you know selecting the uh, distribution channels uh, look for distributors capable of the of developing markets rather than those with a few obvious customer contacts uh, number three treat the local distributor as long-term partners not just temporary market entry vehicles um, number four, support market entry by committing money, managers in improving marketing ideas. Uh, number five, um, you know, from the start, maintain control over marketing strategy. Don't, don't let things get out of control. Um, and uh, number six, make sure that distributors provide you with detailed marketing and financial performance data. And uh, number seven, build links among national distributors at the earliest opportunities. Finally, um, in closing observations, uh, when uh, doing a strategic brand management guidelines, uh, what makes a strong brand, uh, special application, future brand priorities, um, what we have learned is that uh, if you choose the right brand elements and you develop you know the right marketing programs uh, and therefore you can leverage you know the right secondary associations you will gain brand awareness and a strong favorable and unique brand associations and the outcomes of uh, all these uh, things put together uh, will give you a greater loyalty, uh, less vulnerability to uh, competitive marketing actions and, 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 and crisis, uh, larger margins, uh, more elastic response uh, to price decreases, uh, more inelastic response to price uh, increases, greater trade uh, cooperation and support, etc. etc. In, in a nutshell, by doing the right decision in choosing brand elements, developing marketing programs that are uh, appropriate and, and correct uh, in the, uh, the specific market segment, and by leveraging the correct secondary associations, you are going to be able to bring brand equity, and therefore you're going to have a strong and profitable brand.